Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. If you don't know me yet, my name is Matt. I have a PhD in molecular biology. I am an ex-academic. I used to teach and supervise undergraduate and postgraduate students here in the UK. Right, so I had so many students over the years coming to me, asking me about writing essays, thesis, literature reviews, you name it. They all follow the same structure and have the same marking rubric. And often students didn't fully understand the marking rubric. So the aim of today's session is to make sure that you can write your essay like a PhD. Right. So your essay needs to follow a certain structure. It needs to have introduction, main body and conclusions. Right. So in the introduction, what we expect from you is that you state your aims and objectives very clearly and you give us some background information, right? Okay, now your main body will revolve around these aims and objectives. So for each of your aims and objectives, you should have a separate section where you go, do, you go deeper into each of them. So you state your objective and then you give us some evidence, scientific evidence in favor or against that objective, right? And then you need to scrutinize it. So in the end of, a, in, in the end of every paragraph, you will need to show us some critical thinking, which I will go into more depth later as we talk. So once you finish writing your main body, you end up writing your conclusions, where you need to summarize everything you've written in your main body and provide a conclusion. State your opinion. What do you think? It's as easy as this. Suggest what should be done in the future. So now let's go a bit deeper into this. So as you're writing your essay, you need to think about the marking rubric. So your examiner will be thinking about your knowledge and your understanding. So how can you prove these to your examiner? Well, it's actually quite simple. So you need to make sure that everything you write about is on topic is relevant and is accurate. The moment your examiner feels like you're a little bit wishy-washy, you're wasting your time, they will mark you down. So don't use words like some or few. Always be precise. Ideally, if you can give us numbers, give us numbers. Never say it is widely believed or it is generally assumed, da, 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 da. No, give us numbers. We love numbers, right? So be precise, be accurate, but also make sure that everything is ordered in a logical manner. So it needs to be, it needs to be an easy read for your examiner, but, but you really don't want to spend time thinking of what you mean. Like, like if your examiner is thinking that from A you should move to B, but ideally your essay should progress in the same way. So make sure that everything is ordered in a logical order from a sentence to a sentence, from a paragraph to a paragraph, from a whole section to another whole section. Make sure it flows. Ideally, share your essay with some of your friends. Make sure they understand. Maybe share it with friends who are actually not experts in your field. Make sure they understand the gist of what you're talking about. It, that it makes sense to them. If it does, then it's very likely that it will make sense to your examiner and you will get a high mark for knowledge and understanding section. Now, the next important point is style, which is something people tend to forget about. But if your essay looks great, if it looks professional, then it's much more likely that your examiner will enjoy reading it and it will give you a higher mark because it will flow better. So by style, I mean everything looks uniform. It's always the same font the same size, the same line spacing, everything is justified to the left, right, center, whatever it is. It's always uniform. And then please do your figures and tables. You can include so much more informa information within the figures and tables, especially complicated information. So in the main body of your text, just outline, I'm going to talk about this and that, right? Give an outline and then refer the reader to the figure or to the table 
and then give a much more detail in the table, right? And then make sure that every table, however big or small it is, easy or complicated, has a figure ledger. Right, the next point is grammar. It's actually really easy to lose points because of spelling mistakes. And let's not do this. So make sure that you run your essay through a grammar checker. And I would recommend Grammarly.com. It's a website I've been using myself for years and I've been recommending this to all of my students. Grammarly.com is for free and it will check your essay very well and provide you all the suggestions that you need. And again, if your essay is well written, it will flow better, you will get a higher mark. Then we have references, right? Your references need to look professional, need to be properly ordered and written as as expected. So now references are a bit of a pain to most people, but references can actually be really easy if you use referencing software like Mendeley or Zotero. Look down in the description of the video. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you links to Mendeley and Zotero there. So Mendeley and Zotero both have word plugins. So as you're writing your essay, you can just type in I'd like to reference this paper, press hit, and then Zotero or Mendeley will insert an index citation and then another citation at the end of your essay. They will all look, all of your citations will look uniform. You can set Zotero or Mendeley to whatever citation style you want to use, whatever citation style your university wants you to use. And it literally takes five seconds and it looks great, it looks very professional and it costs you nothing. Another important aspect of your essay is the length. So if you were asked to write a 10,000 word essay, just write up to 10,000 words. Because your examiner was asked to stop reading once we reach 10,000 words. On the flip side, don't write a short, much shorter essay, like 8,000 words, for example. And that is simply because the examiner might feel like you haven't fully researched the topic and this is why you were unable to write nearly 10,000 words, right? So if your essay is a little bit too short, you will lose marks and you may not fully prove to your examiner that you understand the topic and that you've done research. And then finally, there's conclusions and critical appraisal. And that critical appraisal is so key. So when, when you finish a section in your main body, what you're really looking for is critical thinking, is evaluation. And by this, we mean what else could be done? What are the strengths and weaknesses of the research you just described? What else could be done in the future? How could it be done differently? How could it be improved? Do we actually believe this data, this, these data sets or we don't? Right? So the examiner is looking for your opinion and for your ideas. And this is really important. And the more in depth you go, the more you prove to your examiner, again, understanding and that you are a critical thinker and your marks will go up immediately if you can prove this to the examiner. So how could it be improved? What are the strengths and weaknesses? What else could be done? And then in your conclusions, summarize everything, state your opinion, conclude, answer the topic, the question in the, in the topic and then say what else could be done in the future. What you would do in the future. What do you think other people should do in the future? That's really important. Right, so all together, remember to show your examiner that you understand by being accurate, by being precise, by being relevant and never being wishy-washy. Make sure that your grammar is on point with Grammarly.com. Make sure that your references are on point 
with Mendeley or Zotero. Make sure everything looks uniform, but all of the tables and figures are outright in the text and they all have their own figure legends and titles. And if they ask you for a 10,000 words essay, try to write at least 9,500 words. And for 95% of the length they asked you, at least, right? So I hope this is going to help you. And I'm sure if you follow this advice, you're going to get a high mark. And please, if you enjoyed this content and you want more, like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you need help with. Because my role here is, is to give you all of my wisdom, all of my knowledge from that I gained working in academia as a lecturer, as a supervisor, to make sure that you do great. And if you know anyone else, anyone who might benefit from watching this video, please share the channel with them. Let's spread the word. Let's make sure that you all succeed.